a common question I get asked is how to deal with relapses. What to do when insomnia returns after a few nights, weeks, months, or even years of good sleep. If you're concerned about an insomnia relapse, or if you're going through one right now, stay tuned because this is what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. Hi, I'm Martin Reed. If you have insomnia, I offer sleep coaching programs that will give you all the skills and support you need to enjoy better sleep for the rest of your life. You can learn more at insomniacoach.com. So before we start talking about how to respond to relapses, I think it's worth spending a little bit of time to explore what we mean by a relapse since what I consider to be a true relapse might be a little bit different to your own definition. Many of us recognize that every day of our lives won't always be fantastic, won't always be great, and won't even always be good. So I think it makes sense to consider that every night of our lives won't always be fantastic, won't always be great, and won't always be good. In other words, just as each day isn't always as good as or better than the previous day, each night won't always be as good as or better than the previous night either. So first and foremost, I think it's helpful to recognize that difficult nights from time to time are a part of life, just as difficult days from time to time are a part of life. Nobody has a great night of sleep every single night of their lives. A few difficult nights does not mean we're experiencing an insomnia relapse. It just means we're experiencing a few difficult nights, which are a normal part of life and a normal part of the human experience. Sometimes there's an obvious cause of sleep disruption. For example, we might receive some news that leaves us worried or excited. We might be going through a big life change. We might be traveling. We might be experiencing some work stress. The list goes on and on. There are probably as many triggers for sleep disruption as there are people in the world. If there's an obvious cause of sleep disruption and it's something you can address, then great. It's worth addressing that problem. But what if there's no obvious cause or the cause is something you can't really address? Well, here's the thing. Difficult nights themselves aren't really the problem. It's our reaction to difficult nights that usually determines how long they'll stick around for. When we don't react much to difficult nights, we give sleep the opportunity to get right back on track all by itself. Now, by reaction, I'm talking more about our behaviors rather than our thought processes. I would never suggest anyone attempts to fight or avoid sleep-related thoughts that might generate worry or anxiety, because it's when we try to control our thoughts or respond to them in a way that leads us to no longer do things that are important to us or to live our life in a way that's not aligned with our values that we often get caught up in them. Thoughts are just thoughts. So they require no reaction beyond recognizing them as thoughts. Nothing more, nothing less. In other words, it's okay to feel worried and it's okay to feel anxious. That just means you're having thoughts and that means you're a human being. So with that out of the way, let's delve into the behavioral side of the equation when it comes to reacting to the return of difficult nights. Let's say you're outside and on a walk, you trip over, you get up. What do you do next? Do you look around for the cause of the trip? Do you start to worry if you can't find an uneven paving slab or a misplaced rock to blame for your fall? Do you start to worry that you'll probably fall over again if you continue walking? Do you spend the rest of the day worrying that you'll never be able to walk again because you might trip? Do you buy new shoes in a bid to reduce the risk of tripping over in the future? Do you go online and research tripping and falling over and the best ways to recover or avoid tripping or falling over? Do you cancel plans with friends because those plans might involve walking or increase the risk of falling over? Do you only allow yourself to walk indoors where you have full control over the environment? My guess is you don't really do any of these things. You trip, 
you maybe feel a bit hurt or a bit embarrassed, and then you get on with your day. You get on with your life and recognize that you might trip again at some point in the future, but that's part of life and worth the risk in return for a life lived according to your values. And yet, if we have a history of insomnia, one difficult night or a few difficult nights might be all that's needed to bring back all our sleep-related worries, fears, and unhelpful behaviors. So with this in mind, I believe the best response to an insomnia relapse is not to respond at all, at least in the short term. Continue going about your day as normal. Avoid the temptation to go to bed earlier or stay in bed later or to nap during the day. Continue to do things that bring joy and enrichment to your life and refuse to allow concern about sleep to control your life or your decisions. In other words, avoid the temptation to modify your life or your routine in response to some temporary sleep disruption. If you do that, you give sleep the best opportunity possible to get right back on track all by itself. And it will almost always do just that if you can just avoid that completely understandable temptation to get involved in the process, to put effort into sleep, to try to control sleep, or to put pressure on yourself to sleep. Now, let's say that your sleep doesn't seem to get right back on track all by itself, even though you feel you haven't made any changes since those difficult nights returned. Maybe you found yourself struggling with sleep for a few weeks. In this case, I'd suggest re-implementing any techniques you found helpful in the past. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I'm a big believer in cognitive and behavioral techniques such as sleep restriction and stimulus control. If you've implemented techniques like these in the past and found them helpful, then you can simply implement them again. Just as they proved to be helpful in the past, they'll almost certainly prove to be helpful again. So if you find that you're consistently spending too much time awake at night, you might ensure that you aren't allotting too much time for sleep each night. If you find that you're tossing and turning all night and finding it really unpleasant to be in bed, you might just get out of bed whenever being in bed doesn't feel good and do something to help make that nighttime wakefulness a bit more pleasant until conditions for sleep feel a bit better. Perhaps the most important response to difficult nights though is going about our days as normally as possible. Because if we can live our lives as though insomnia doesn't exist, it often stops existing. Because when we give sleep less of a role and less of an influence in our lives, we often start to put less effort into sleep, put less pressure on ourselves to sleep and allow the body to take care of sleep all by itself, which is exactly what it wants to do. So I hope you found this short video helpful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. If you have any questions, comments, feedback or suggestions for a future video, please leave a comment below or you can email me directly. My email address is hello at insomniacoach.com. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'd like to leave you with this important reminder. You can sleep.